Well, I'm gonna be playing this, this old thing. I haven't played this in about 20 years, maybe more, I don't know. But uh, yeah, if you're watching later on YouTube, thanks for clicking. People have asked me to play this one, so... Uh, welcome, this is Dinosaur Land. In this strange land, we find that Princess Toadstool is missing again. Looks like Bowser is at it again. Back when they were still calling her that and didn't permanently go with Peach. Or is it a different person? I don't know. Like, is it... Peach, Toadstool, Toadstool, Peach. <laughs> Anyway, this is going to be pretty laid back and casual. As I'm sure there are like a million playthroughs of this. And these days people tend to stick to uh, ROM hacks of this game. I mean, that's its legacy, is just... It's kind of formed a massive community around speedrunning and hacks. And I realized I took damage in like the first few seconds, which is bad. In a child was screaming, don't worry. But it's, it's been a minute. I think the thing that I've played... What, Janked Up Mario Party? That was pretty recent. I'll talk about my memories about this game soon, but... I figured... It's a good way to spend a Saturday, just kind of kick back. I know it's not going to give me grief, <laughs> like some of the other stuff I've been playing lately. And there's no uh, sound of a recorder, the soundtrack is nice. Oh man, that recorder. I've been playing um, Yoshi's Crafted World, for those that know the context, just... That game is great. I like it. I like how... How nice it is, visually. But the soundtrack to that game, holy crap. Started off fine, but then you realise, oh wait, it's the same melody most of the time. And then, it's just... The use of a recorder instrument over and over again. And every time it kicks in. Maybe it's just me because I just find the recorder to be a jarring thing. But yeah, that soundtrack is just recorders. So it's not only nice to hear something that doesn't have a recorder as a soundtrack for multiple hours. But also, once Yoshi's in the picture, I mean, this is Yoshi as I know it. I never completely got used to Yoshi, modern Yoshi. It's just how it sounds. But I guess in this game you don't have the, the flutter thing, so... But that's the sound effect that's most off-putting to me. Hooray, thank you for rescuing me. My name is Yoshi, on my way to rescue my friends. Browser trap- Bowser, Browser? <laughs> Bowser trapped me inside that egg. Wait. So that's not Yoshi hatching out of an egg, that's Bowser trapping Yoshi? I don't remember that. Why don't I remember that? I thought that was just Yoshi hatching. I thought, well, if- so Bowser sealed Yoshi in an egg, and then to be just extra sure that Yoshi wasn't going anywhere, also sealed Yoshi within 
a block. I might do the thing where I at least go for the dragon coins. I know there's no real incentive to do so, but... I feel like that, that could be a bare minimum I could do. What the hell? I didn't know that Bowser trapped Yoshi in that egg. I thought... I always thought Yoshi just hatched out of it. I mean, I kind of figured you were rescuing Yoshi. But I didn't think it was from the egg. I can't remember if this was the game, but in the manual it says Yoshi has a, a surname. So, like, Yoshi's full name is Yoshisaurus T. Munchakoopers. Which is never ever referenced again, but yeah, she does have a full name. So then, how does that explain... <laughs> how many Yoshis did Bowser trap? And then they become eggs? That's just advice. I don't think any any of these offered law. Again, it's been like twenty something years. I should play the Game Boy Advance version at some point, much like the Donkey Kong series. I've heard there's there's differences in those games that make make them I wouldn't say definitive, but at least different enough to check out. They evolved. What, the Yoshis evolved into a one-up mushroom? <laughs> Hello, Elvian. I mean, that would- I guess that would loosely match the plot of, uh, the original Mario movie. They used this machine to turn them into- into, uh, lower creatures. What was it, like, the king became just... fungus? I don't know, that movie was weird. So maybe, like, Bowser's de-evolution ray is, like, canon in, in this universe. So de-evolves Yoshi into a one-up mushroom. And then puts that mushroom in an egg. Just to be safe. Also puts it inside a block. I wonder how many other things I'm just not going to get because I just never read. Because, I mean, I first played this game... Oh, how old would I have been? It's definitely on, like, the edge of my memory. I keep thinking red coins are going to show up. The point is, I, th I would have been, like, primary school, elementary school, whatever phrase makes the most sense to you. <laughs> I mean, when did this come out? Like, 90-something? I have the cartridge directly in front of me. Can I even look? It's kind of low light in here. It doesn't say on the front. Okay. Still. Yeah, it doesn't mark when you've gotten all the coins. But I will do them for the sake of my inner child being happy. I'll be like, yes, I got all the coins. 
I want to see how long I can go without dying as well. I don't know why I'm bringing this with me, but... <laughs> gonna do it. Completely unnecessary. In fact, this might just be that ROM hack I played kind of creeping in. It's okay. I did it. I brought it here and... Pointless. <laughs> okay. Oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> I would like to not die in until at least the forest. That that would be my my goal here. At least the forest, then I, I can be happy. If I die before that, then I'll probably default this world in real life. Mario has defeated the demented Iggy Koopa in castle number one and rescued Yoshi's friend who is still trapped in an egg. Together, they now travel to Donut Land. Man. <laughs> Again, with the trapping of the Yoshis in the eggs, I thought they just naturally hatched out of it. So this is my head canon of this game is like, you're rescuing the eggs, and then at the end, the Yoshi's hatch. That's my headcanon of this game. I mean, of course, there's, you know, Toadstool, Peach, whatever, of course. But I always thought that... Yeah. You're just rescuing the Yoshi eggs, and then at the end, because they're safe, they hatch. But, no, it's... <laughs> Bowser's trapped them inside the eggs. I wonder if that's, like, a one-for-one -one translation, or is that just like Nintendo of America just um yeah taking liberties there a little bit man some of the translations between Japan and the rest of the world did not come out as good as they could have okay oh my god Am I not going to get a single one, right? Come on! Okay. <laughs> one. Even if there was, like, a, a set order, not a chance in hell I, I could remember it. For the sake of being an okay playthrough, I'm not going to say it's going to be a good playthrough, but I'm going to try not to resort to flying too much. Because there are some stages you can just go over the whole thing. But I think we need an appreciation of this game. Also, we're kind of in a period where enough people that didn't play this have grown up and kind of have interest in these kind of games. I still say play, play this version. The Game Boy Advance version... I don't know. <laughs> I'd have to play it, but... There's something off-putting about that version of the game. Alright, watch. This is my favorite thing to do. Oh, wow! <laughs> Alright, I gotta go back and do that level again. Because two exits... Alright. 
back up cape. Thank you. All I know of the Game Boy Advance Mario games is that they just shoved voice acting into them. So, like, there's just constant noises of Mario talking. And it's Charles Martinet's Mario, so... I've heard how it sounds like in Super Mario- I'm oh, sorry, Mario 3. I guess it's still Super Mario 3. It was very off-putting. But to some, I guess that's the way they play that game. I mean, given... Nintendo has retired Charles. Might be worth playing those sometime soon. And that's the phrasing I'm going to use, because I'm, I'm sort of convinced that... Ugh. I think it was more Nintendo's choice than Charles, and Charles agreed. Just based on the phrasing of the post they did, I don't know. And I think once Charles said that he, you know, wanted to keep doing this as long as possible. And he's definitely still capable. Yoshi, no! <laughs> Shit. Alright, rip Yoshi. At least it wasn't me ditching Yoshi on purpose. found it hysterical that to save your own ass you can just ditch Yoshi in certain levels. do this again. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could just <laughs> end the playthrough in the next 10 minutes. There's a famous song on YouTube about this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about Mario and Yoshi having an adventure and then Mario ditches Yoshi. I mean, Ma Mario is flipping Yoshi off as Yoshi plunges to his doom. It's, I think it's to the to the theme of um, donut planes, if I'm not mistaken. It's great. I think my favorite urban legend, or at least the thing that would spread around among the playground, just the common belief, was that Mario was punching Yoshi in the back of the head to make Yoshi eat stuff. Because the animation certainly makes it look that way. But if you look in the manual, it's Mario's pointing. So Mario points at, points at the enemy and then Yoshi eats it. But it just... <laughs> Everyone thought it was Mario punching Yoshi in the back of the head, like, "Hey, eat this! Do it, Yoshi! You gotta eat! You gotta you gotta eat the fish, Yoshi! Oi! Eat the fish!" It's a dragon coin. I 
I mean, there were a few others, like, um... Mario spitting the fire out of his mouth. There was also Mario hitting the the blocks with his head, which apparently is not a thing. Like the whole thing with the graphics is he has one hand up, so he's punching the block. He's not hitting it with his head. But again, everyone thought, oh, Mario hits these blocks with his solid fucking skull. <laughs> I don't care, that, that's my headcanon. Mario, because of all the, the damage he's caused his brain from hitting bricks with his head for three consecutive get whole games, just decides to punch Yoshi and ditch him because he keeps falling into holes. Yoshi is the smarter creature in this game. Mario's voice to me was a gruff Italian man from New York. Because at this point, the only Mario voice I had heard was the voice from the Super Show. Which, I mean, in Australia, I don't think that ever aired anywhere. At least not at the time when I was a kid. But there were VHS tapes of it, so we used- we had one and then we rented a few from the library because they had VHS tapes. And they were free. I mean, it was kind of good that they had all this free stuff to rent. They didn't have games, but they had movies and stuff, which was kind of neat. But yeah, the, the whole, like, punching things... Just doesn't fit in. Hitting your head against a solid brick and punching dinosaurs that don't obey your commands, that sounds like a gruff Italian man. I'm not going- I am not going to die until at least the forest stage. <laughs> <laughs> it's, going, it's going to happen. There will be no death here until at least the forest. I mean, if I can get through the whole game without dying, it'll make me very happy. Not correct, at least good. Second best result I could have hoped for. There's still the secret in the stage, I can't remember. Hold on. It's in a pipe. I've also been looking at Sega games from this era that I feel like I need to play. My, my cousin didn't have a Genesis, Master Drive, whatever you want to call it. Whatever makes the most sense to you. <laughs> I think it's only Americans that got the name Genesis. But yeah, he had the Master System, he had some games on them, and I enjoyed- I remember enjoying them, but I don't remember them, because I was too young at the time. But I do remember the console. And the box art. With that grid pattern or whatever they had going for themselves. 
Shit, it may have been that pipe. No, it's this pipe, okay. But for instance, I've never played Sonic the Hedgehog properly. My only exposure to Sonic was just as a little kid, and my cousin had it, and the vaguest of memories. But there's other games as well, like they had a Castlevania equivalent, which was supposed to be really good. Oh yeah, good. That's the way you're supposed to do it. <laughs> ah, someone's gonna absolutely hate that. It's okay. I'll leave Star Road to last. I think that's how I'm going to play it. Kind of treat Star Road as the culmination, as opposed to a means of getting around. This room is as pointless as I thought it was. <laughs> I just followed the arrows. You gotta be careful, one of these is like correct. There's another exit. Every ghost house has two exits, I just have to remember how this one works. It, it's been too long. Okay, that might be it. I think it's like at the very start. I have to fly to the left. I just have to be careful about it. Oh, nice. This is memories of, like, the same thing in Mario 3. Okay. Top secret area! Anytime I want to get Yoshi back. Yeah, if you watch, <laughs> like, because Mario doesn't have an index finger pointing out, that's the problem. It just looks like he's punching Yoshi in the back of the head. That's how I always interpreted it. And everyone did as a kid when I was growing up. It was just like, nah, Mario's just that cruel of an Italian man. He's punching this poor dinosaur in the back of the head.
I'm gonna fight the temptation to just... Because <laughs> you can... You can do this. You can finish the stage pretty easily. But I'm not gonna do it. For the sake of, like, I guess... Letting those that have never seen this game give it! <laughs> um, those that have never seen this game, see it. You'd be shocked, but there are people that haven't seen this game. Either they were Sega kids growing up, or it's just enough time has passed that... Not everyone has experienced these games. They may have experienced later games. I'm gonna yell. Just, just be aware of that. It's just when something happens that makes my inner child scream, it's just this visceral thing that's just like, I can't believe that just happened to you. You've been playing this game since the age of seven. Stop it. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> There's very few games that can do that to me, and I feel like... It's not that this is a hard game, it's just... I can't mess up. Not like that. <sighs> Alright. Let's see if I can do better. Yes! Ah. Who is from the 1990s and didn't see Yoshi games, not you? There are people that are like that. That's the thing, no matter how much you want to believe the thing that you love is so universally love, it's not... Another one is, is Zelda. People think that everyone has played and... They love Zelda games. <laughs> it wouldn't be... I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. There's a surprising amount of people from my chat that haven't seen this. I mean, people that are younger, it's fair enough. It's like, you know, some people's first Mario game was Mario Sunshine. And then there are others where it goes even beyond that. <laughs> it's like Mario Galaxy. And it makes me feel old, but... Yeah. I, th I think this game still holds up. There's a reason people keep playing it. I mean... The amount of ROM hacks that have been made off, off this particular game. This is where they got the platforming for Mario perfect. I think... I still think Mario 3 is, is the better game between the two. Mario 3 has more upgrades and world variety, and that's what I love about that game. This one, it's definitely better from a mechanics point of view. Okay, there we go. I just wanted to get all the dragon coins. It's not that I needed to do the stage again, but... Just sticking with that. So whilst I played this a lot as a kid... I actually didn't own the game. It was my cousin that had the Super Nintendo and we would go to his house every, practically every day for a while. But, um... I, the, the way it worked was... He would hang out with his friends after school, so... We used to live just across from our school. So we'd go over to his house, and we'd be playing the Super Nintendo, and then he'd get home about an hour later, and then we'd stop playing it. Which more or less fit in with, like, the... the amount of time we were allowed to play as kids, anyway. But that's how I experienced this game and uh, A Link to the Past. 
And Star Fox. He was the one that owned them, not me. <laughs> that was just... Just rivalry. I can't remember what it started with, but... He knew how to fly in this game. Properly. I never learned how to fly in Super Mario World until as an adult. When I played ROM hacks and then I kind of figured it out. But as a kid, I didn't know how to keep flying. Like, go up, go down. I didn't know how to do that. Didn't read the manual. <laughs> but. I would ask him and he wouldn't tell me. He'd say, figure it out. And so there was just this back and forth that... Each of us would discover something in a game, and then when we'd ask each other, like, how'd you find that, or where'd you find that, we'd just say, figure it out. And for the most part, we would figure it out. The one I never figured out was the flying. The one he never figured out was how to get the golden sword and a link to the past. Whoops. INTERNAL SCREAMING! <laughs> I'm fine. I think I made a poor choice. There's a boss here. Not just that, it has been such a long time since I've seen the stock standard version of this fight. Every single ROM hack I play, they just dial up the difficulty to 12. Well, we're not going there. That's, again, the stages will be left till the end. Even though I do love those stages. Oh yeah, right, I probably. <laughs> again, resisting temptation to just fly through the stage in its entirety. I could, but I'm not going to. If I was just rushing through this, this is what I'd be doing. Got to do this the correct way. Here we go. Worth the extra 10 seconds it took to line that up. Because I'm going to need all 37 of these lives. out of spite. The other thing I thought about these and so childhood memories. I thought these things were little tomatoes because I thought the Goombas were mushrooms with feet. I thought these things were cherry tomatoes. So Yoshi, you know, eating little cherry tomato creatures and little mushroom creatures. I mean, they're in the Mushroom Kingdom, so I thought vegetables. Oh, 
What? <laughs> I didn't even press the... Oh. I must have caught him. Anyway. Platforming challenge. Oh, no. <laughs> I think the, the most insane one that I even, as a teenager, I still thought it was the case until I saw the 3D Marios. I thought the bullet bill hands, oh crap, were teeth. So I thought those bullet bills were smiling at me, but instead, in reality, it was bullet bill's hands. Okay, Morton! I forget who Morton is. I've said this multiple times, but... When it comes to controllers, I feel like we, we got the D-pad right in this era. The Super Nintendo and the Genesis, now that I've experienced the Genesis controller. The D-pad on both of these controllers are just excellent. Why do we keep trying to reinvent the wheel? And I look primarily at the Xbox controller that I think has the worst D-pad of them all right now. I mean, even the Switch Pro controller's D-pad isn't great. I don't know. <laughs> this controller is damn old and it still has a good feeling D-pad. I'm so happy that I bought the... Because Nintendo, when you have the subscription thing, you can purchase stuff from their store. They have... Official wireless controllers for their, their system. So you can get like a Super Nintendo controller, an N64 controller, or the NES controllers, which are just Joy-Cons, but the Super Nintendo controller is just top tier. Because they added two extra buttons, so then you have the two extra um, triggers. They're tiny and kind of awkward, but the main thing is, is like, Anytime I'm playing something that requires a good D-pad, I can use that on PC as well, and it's great. Alright, this fight. I would say this is my only complaint about this game, if I was to think about it. Some of the bosses... I don't know. <laughs> it could be easier. The difficulty curve is weird. Like, I feel like this should have been the first boss, but then you have... the lava platform as the first boss, which was harder, and then you come back to this. And it's just, wait, why is this so easy? Morton Cooper Jr. of Castle Number 2 is now just a memory. The next area is Underground Vanilla Dome. What traps await Mario in this new world? What will become a Princess Toadstool? Okay. This theme is pretty good. I'm gonna leave it here for a sec. I wanna hear it. Also, lets me drink water. This might be nostalgia speaking, but man, the Super Nintendo era and its soundtracks. When you're talking about the big name players, it's, it's kind of hard to find a soundtrack that isn't good.
Hey, Colorin, how's it going? I'm gonna try my hardest not to die. <laughs> There's a scenario where you can force yourself to die here. Okay, yep, just... Everything's fine. Getting ready to go to the Scottish games. Scottish games, huh? I don't think we have such a thing here. I'll enjoy. You know, this is a case of ditching Yoshi. It's like, alright, bye Yoshi. You've served your purpose, bye. Do the normal path now. Now without Yoshi. Wow. <laughs> I'm so annoyed at that. That shouldn't have happened. Tell it a big man you get to roam the gardens. That's nice. Love this one as a kid because you got to have Yoshi. So here's a question for you. With regards to Yoshi. So when Mario rides Yoshi, does he point to tell Yoshi what to do? Or does he punch Yoshi in the back of the head? I want to see. Is Mario pointing for Yoshi or is he punching Yoshi in the back of the head? He punched him? <laughs> see? See? Everyone thought that, but it's not the case. I found out later as an adult. In the manual. Oh no, I died. Well, time for me to go die in real life. Did they change it? No, they never changed it. It was, so, in the game, it looks like he's punching him in the back of the head, but it's always been that Mario points. In the manual, and it's art, in every piece of manual artwork, Mario's pointing. It's just the sprite doesn't represent that too clearly. So every kid thought that Mario was being cruel to Yoshi. <laughs> no matter who you talk to, no matter what part of the world, everyone says, yeah. Mario was punching Yoshi in the back of the head. This gruff Italian man was going, Hey! Eat! Eat the fish! <laughs> eat the fish! Eat the fucking fish! It did look like it was he was punching him. It really did. Let's see, it's, it's a worldwide thing. Oh my god. Okay, there we go. That caused more trouble than it should have. The other one was people thought Mario was hitting the blocks with his head. But that was never the case. Mario punches the blocks. Oh good, I missed. Really? Yeah. It's always been the case since the original one. One of his hands is, uh... Is, like, up. It's just, you can't see it clearly, but... He is always punching the block.
I don't remember if you can do that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I did this that way as a kid, always. Okay, there we go. Okay, this is this one tripped me up here, but all right, the story of this game. What do you remember of the story of this game with Yoshi, the the Yoshi eggs at the end of the the game? Like, what is what is your memory of the story? I'll say my memory, and you tell me if it's the same. My memory of the story of this game is that Bowser stole some Yoshi eggs, and you have to rescue them. And then at the end of the game, because you've rescued all the eggs, the Yoshis hatch. And everyone is happy. That's what I remember of this game. The story. Aside from, you know, Princess Peach or Toadstool or whatever getting kidnapped. That was the other thing that happened. It's like, at the end of- Every castle you beat, you rescue an egg, and then at the end, all the eggs hatch. When you're back at, uh, Yoshi's house. That's- that's my memory. Damn it. Get in there. I can do this. <laughs> I don't even- No, I do. The, the coin- Wait, oh, I can't even get all the coins unless I don't die. <sighs> well, that's kind of a lost cause at this point. The eggs were stolen and you had to save the eggs. That's why Yoshi comes. With you, don't think you got to the end. Okay, cool. But you you effectively have the same premise as me as like the eggs. You're rescuing the eggs. The eggs something happened to them. Bowser stole them. Yeah. Do you want to know what the actual story is? I just read it before. It popped up. The story is Bowser has trapped Yoshi inside the egg. So the first Yoshi you come across, it says, Thank you for rescuing me. Bowser trapped me inside the egg. So the real story is that Bowser has trapped Yoshi inside those eggs. It's not Yoshi hatching out of those eggs. <laughs> it's not a natural thing. Like, that's not Yoshi's natural egg, apparently. It's some, some sort of device that Bowser has used to trap Yoshi. That is the story, yes. It's amazing. And this one is not even an, an interpretation thing, like, it pops up on the screen. You have to re when you- if you read the text, that's what it says. I- I was so weirded out when I read it, I was like, wait, really? I thought we were rescuing eggs that, that Bowser stole from Yoshi. In the movie, do I think Bowser trapped Yoshi and now Yoshi is free? I don't know. I wonder if they're gonna go with it. But then it doesn't explain... <sighs> is Yoshi ever in an egg in other games? I don't think he is. And it kind of makes sense because if you think about it, right? Look at Yoshi's Island and the game that we're playing right now. It's not... Yoshi is creating eggs that are trapping enemies inside those eggs. And Yoshi is throwing those things. It's not like they're Yoshi eggs. They're things that Yoshi is using to trap the enemy, and I guess Bowser has that same ability. To trap enemies inside the egg like that. Or, it's, or maybe Bowser got someone to do it, I don't know. But they're not Yoshi eggs. <laughs> I always thought they were Yoshi eggs. And you're rescuing baby Yoshis. And this could be one of these things that could easily be a Mandela effect. Like, I get the feeling a lot of... A lot of kids that grew up with this game will remember it the way that we're remembering it, which is like... You know, you're rescuing baby Yoshis. Thought you were saving the eggs. Yeah, same. I thought you were saving the eggs, and then the eggs hatch at the end of the game. When you've rescued them all. <laughs> But, I mean, you're, you're getting the eggs, but it's because Yoshi is trapped in those eggs, and Bowser put Yoshi in that egg. I'm 
this is this is definitely a mandala effect. There's gonna be some kids that actually read the text and they'll be like, what are you guys talking about? But they'll be, I'll, I guarantee you, there's gonna be like a large percentage of kids that played this game that will just remember it that way as you rescuing the Yoshi eggs and they'll swear that's what it was the whole time. It's like the whole, uh, those bears, the burst stain and the burst stain bear. That reading thing, <laughs> didn't like to do that as a kid. I mean, when I played this, I was yo fairly youngish. I could read, but I guess I just wasn't at a point where I would read everything in the game. But yeah, there you go, that was... You're younger than me too, so... If I was young when this came out, you were younger. Yeah. I mean, I would have been like... <sighs> six or seven when this came out. And then I think I would have played it at my cousin's when... I was maybe... Eight? Something like that. Oh, for fuck's sake. Because Australia would have gotten it a, a bit later than America. Like, almost a year later. Because that's just how it was in that era. Game gets released, Australia either gets it a year later or not at all. sucks. Yeah, it's no longer the case, thankfully. But you'd read about games in magazines that were coming up. You'd get excited for them, and then sometimes they just wouldn't come out. <laughs> it didn't happen a lot of the time, but the bare minimum was you're waiting anywhere between six months to a year to play the game that Americans played. Europe... Europeans suffered a little bit, like, sometimes they would get games that took a while to release as well. And often we were lumped together. Like, Australian copies used to just straight up be just... ...a European game with a sticker put over it to say it was from Australia. That's how lazy they were with us. How old was I when we moved to Australia? I was an infant. I have no recollection of where we were. I was born overseas, but yeah. I was like three months old when we arrived in Australia, so. But you know, the first five or so years of my life, it was pretty much not speaking English or anything like that. I didn't get all the dragon coins. <laughs> it's okay. Alright, ghost town. Nice to play this game in a casual form again. Just forcing myself to not rely on the cape 
or at least fly over the stage because there's so many instances where I could just do that and we'd be done with the stage but I want this to be I guess a form of appreciation for the game but also just people that haven't seen this before and mm, well here you are there it is that's good memories it is But we've reached the point where there's just enough people that have grown up now that just haven't played these these games ever. Like, okay, so my brother, my younger two brothers were definitely around with the Super Nintendo. Because we had that console for a very long time. So they would be aware of this game, but I don't think they they would have ever finished it. I think they may have played it, but I don't think they have ever finished it. It's something me and my other brother joke about. <laughs> Just, they never finished games as kids, compared to us. And you know, I, when I popped in the Donkey Kong Country 3 cartridge, and then their two save files, both 3%, it's just like, yep, that's how they used to be. I also just flew over the stage. I'm going back. Sorry. <laughs> I did the thing that I said I wasn't going to do. How dare I. But okay, this is flight. Something I didn't learn how to do properly until I was an adult. And... Yeah, my cousin never taught me how to, how to fly in this game. You're with them, don't think you finished this one. <laughs> I mean, as long as you finish some game, it's fine, like... Or got close to the end. Or at least halfway. Like, the bar is very low when it comes to my younger two brothers in terms of how much of an effort they made to finish the game. If you got halfway, you probably got further than what they did. Do they play games now? Yeah, they do. They're better. They're better at it now. But I showed my, my brother the screenshot of the save files before I erased one of those. He was laughing. Just kids not finishing games. It's not even finishing them, like... They just never got anywhere in it. They kind of gave up. Is this game my original copy? Uh, it is not because I didn't have this game growing up. I played it at my cousin's house almost every day. But I did get a copy of it um, as a teenager, so this is my teenage copy of the game. I said it before, uh, so he would go and hang out with his friends after school. Sometimes they'd go to an arcade or something. But once school was over, he would take anywhere between an hour to two hours to get home. And we used to live across the road from our school, so we'd get home from school. We'd go over to our aunts, because they live pretty close. And we would play games there until he got home. And then he would play. So that's how I played Super Mario World, Zelda, um, and Star Fox and Pilot Wings. I think those were the games he had. He had another one. I forgot the name of it. I don't think it was a very good game, but maybe it's because I just didn't get very far in it. So I didn't understand how it worked. Those are good games as well. Oh yeah. I, I kind of realized this recently. Um, because here's the thing, it's not like I had any, any say in the games we, we got as kids. With my cousin, it was a different case. He picked the games that he got. So the Super Nintendo is probably the outlier, but like, 
for the games we got on our Super Nintendo and the NES, they were games that my my parents picked, I guess. And they knew nothing about games, and yet we ended up with all three Mario Brother games. We ended up with the original Zelda, Mega Man 2, which is like arguably the best one out of the NES games. And then weird little games like Parodius, which was like that, that game that I played um, the other month. Just really either games that are like beloved or games that had a cult following. And that was our library for the NES and the Super Nintendo, somehow. And I've heard people talk about the games they had growing up, and a lot of them had either games that were from a movie, or, you know, they would have their Mario Brother games, sure, but their library involved games that were considered not great for their time, just like, oh, just a cheap game they made for this movie, or whatever. So kind of lucky in that regard. Star Fox was great. My cousin bought that and then he had to, he went to uh, visit my other cousins in America. So whilst he was over there, I finished that game. I binged it. Um, it was also called Star Wing here, not Star Fox, because for some reason they couldn't get the name. I'm just gonna not fly over the stage, even though I could. Yeah, so... If we look at the bullet bill, this is something else I was talking about. Until I was a teenager, I thought the bullet bills, those white things, not its eyes, I thought that that was the teeth, and so the bullet bills were smiling at you. It wasn't until way later that I learned, oh wait, those are... Those are hands. <laughs> but I mean, as a kid, I thought the Goombas were mushrooms and then the enemies in this game were cherry tomatoes. I thought, oh yeah, no, in this world, you know, the enemies are vegetables. Mario hates vegetables. Oh, forgot about that. Jeez. Yeah, I bet that's caused some deaths. Just suddenly it shoots from four directions without warning. I remember the name of the game, Wing Commander. That was the other game my cousin had. Oh, shit. Farewell. Sorry, Yoshi! <laughs> I wish I could play that song of Yoshi, um, you know, getting left behind by Mario. Poor Yoshi. It was a life or death situation. I already broke my promise about not dying until the, the forest level. I'm going to try and minimize the death until then. Also, how are you supposed to realistically get those these last two blocks? Like, okay, this end one... It's probably that, right? Don't die. I'll, I'll, I'll try my best, but it's already happened a few times. Okay, I have 55 lives. Don't worry. I just always used to imagine Mario's gruffy Italian voice just punching Yoshi on the back of the head. 
Oh, dick. Oh, dick. <laughs> it was the Mario from the Super Show. That's all I knew was Mario's voice until Mario 64. I mean, I, I don't know why anyone would go the long way, but I feel like I should go the long way in some of these stages, you know? Just to show, hey, I mean, if, if you didn't pick up that that was a secret. <laughs> I don't want this to be a tutorial, but like, I do want to just show appreciation of the game in a casual fashion. Oh, good. Forgot about that. I'm kind of scared to play the Game Boy Advance version of this game. I've heard it's worth a playthrough, but I just... <sighs> the moment... Mario starts talking. It's just gonna throw me off so much. It really is. What level is this? This is in the cave, the castle. I forget which, uh, Koopa Kid is in here. We'll find out. Why did they make him talk? I don't know. I guess because maybe they just wanted to show off just how powerful the Game Boy Advance was. It's like, oh, here's a Super Nintendo game, but then, hey, the Super Nintendo couldn't really do voice. Like a... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Inner Child. Inner Child was angry that happened to me. That should not have happened. I sounded like the Cooper kid. <laughs> it's like someone's. Yeah, I still won, but I, I also lost. <laughs> like, I feel like someone stabbed me in the heart. I love these animations, by the way. I always love these. They're great. Mario has triumphed over Lemmy Cooper of Castle Number 3. Mario's quest is still starting to get much more difficult. Have you found the red and green switches yet? Yeah, I know. See, the egg? You're rescuing the eggs. You're right. Like, I, this is what I thought. It's like, a cool, another baby Yoshi that we've rescued. But it's not. It's like, hey, this is this, is this capture device that Bowser... I mean, when you think about it, it's more evil. Like, Bowser walked up to a baby and then trapped it inside an egg. It is more evil, I'll give it that. <laughs> but it's not what I thought it was. It's definitely more evil. I'll give it that. Did this have a star road entry? I feel like, hang on. No, I think this is all there is for this cave. Anyway. No, wait. Yeah, I haven't gone up the- yeah, there is. On- on the left there's a star road entry. I haven't done it yet. Um, I'll do the bridge and then when we get to the fork in the road here, I'll go back and we'll go up- up a path. There we go, perfect. I mean, I would fly over the stage, typically, but... Okay, well now I can't fly over the stage. <sighs> I can't get the dragon coin. I'm sorry. <laughs> now I can.
There's a Super Mario World randomizer that's around where you can play this game and, you know, the order of the levels is randomized, but then... Oh, shit. But then they add stuff like ice physics to certain stages. And what... That's a Yoshi thing. And one of the, uh, the streamers I watched got this level with ice on it. Oh my god, it's so horrendous. Oh yeah, I love ice, but like, imagine that, but ice physics everywhere. <laughs> I feel like... Um... Oh, what was the character's name in Cool Runnings? That old Disney movie? About the Jamaicans having a bobsled team for the Winter Olympics. Fuck, I forget his name. But that guy, you know, when one of his friends is talking about starting said team, and he describes that they're going to be on ice just the whole way. Ice as in penguins and igloos and ice? That's how I am. Just like, ice? <laughs> Brain breaks. Okay, hold on. We got the winning combo. If I can do this once... Yes! Inner Child is happy. That was a good movie. It was. Another one I have not seen in a very long time. I need Joshi. I'm going to go get Joshi. Oh my god. I, <laughs> I've been playing ROM hacks for a long time of this game. And they always make Mario move quickly along the map. This feels so slow, but this is how he always moved. <laughs> okay. Pick the wrong side. Like the music in the cave. Same. Let's see, he grows up. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I'm just, I'm just the messenger here. <laughs> That's the text that popped up, and it caused confusion for me as well. It's just childhood memories. Clearly not correct. Now I have to fly over this. Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> How did I used to do this? I feel like I used to bounce off one. I don't know. I don't have the memory of it. Let's just stick to this one. But I remember you could get across this without touching the platforms. I'm not gonna mess it up. I just need to get to the flying Yoshi thing. That's all. I also think this might be a case of I need to just ditch Yoshi at the end, but we'll see. This might be the, the stage that the song is referencing where, by design, the only way to get the secret is to just... <laughs> Throw Yoshi to his doom. Was this the first game with Yoshi? Uh, with Mario and Yoshi together? Ye I believe so. With Yoshi as a character? No, there were a few games on the NES that had Yoshi as a character. Admittedly in a pretty minor background form. Like, there was a puzzle, a few puzzle games that had Yoshi in it. Um, I think there may have been an ad- ah!
<laughs> I think they may have been an educational title. Oh my god. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I know. I'd be okay if it wasn't for this fucking feeling of regret that's just boiling up inside of me right now. Anyway, yeah, Yoshi was featured in other stuff before this era, but this was definitely the game that made Yoshi as popular as, as Yoshi is. I might be wrong, but I think that wing thing just... I mean, we'll see. I still can't believe that they decided to have points in this game. At least in Mario 3, the points still did something. But just <laughs> going back to the punching in the back of the head thing. Just imagine how distracting it is, like Yoshi's trying his best to fly, and then Mario's punching him in the back of the head. Eat it! Eat it! Eat it! Eat it! Eat it! Eat the fucking thing, Yoshi! <laughs> I don't even know what those things are, they're like fuzzy things, I guess. It's not even that. What is it then? Well, at least I have the uh, best Yoshi now. Deluxe Yoshi. I think this is the stage where you just have to abandon Yoshi. You think it's low oxygen from being punched, he's blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Restricted air supply, Yoshi. Wait, but then... I forget how this works. Yeah, and then you do this, it's like... Yeah, <laughs> this is the stage. This is the stage where, like, you have to do that to Yoshi to get the, the secret. There's no other way. There's no Koopa that you can eat. Yep, to his doom. Actively encouraged. Soda Lake. This is my second favorite underwater theme. I mean, the Donkey Kong Country underwater theme takes Takes the award for best underwater theme. It 
this is number two. Number three for me is, uh... There's a Ninja Turtles game on the NES that has this infamous level. Where people usually give up in the game, but... The music for it's really good. I wish I could remember the lyrics to the, the Yoshi song. <laughs> the one of like Mario and Yoshi having adventures and then just Mario abandoning Yoshi. I remember the Ninja Turtles game your cousin had. There were a few, but... Oh shit. There was one that was more of a... A beat-em-up game. Ah, oh, that's dirty. <laughs> but the one I'm talking about... Like, you would play as one turtle, and then when you would die, you could... It would swap to another turtle. Or I think it could swap at some point. I can't remember. Okay, here's one other thing I learned way later. When it comes to swimming in Mario World. So you've got, you know, you're pressing B to swim. But if you hold down and press B. Then you do like a much shorter stroke. So you can control the swimming a lot better. I did not learn this until I start play playing ROM hacks. And again... This is probably something that is explained in manuals, but because I never read the things as a kid. I'd be surprised how much easier the stages are when you do that. Yeah, that reading thing again. I don't play games to read, I'm not a fucking nerd, jeez. <laughs> I already had a hard enough time playing games. <laughs> I didn't want to get called being a nerd for playing games and reading. I'm pretty sure I am a nerd. Yeah, well as an adult I'll proudly say that I am. Especially since now it's, it doesn't have a bad connotation to it. It can be a good thing. You can thank the the Silicon Valley for that one, honestly. Just, what's that? Nerds inventing technology things and then nerds are becoming rich? Oh shit, maybe being a nerd isn't a bad thing. <laughs> Just go figure it out. This is one of these things you don't figure out. I've been playing Tunic, and something happened yesterday in that game that was just- it was straight up, like... It's so good because it's pretty much what would have happened to most kids from this era. Just... Not reading the manual and never figuring shit out. So there's some fundamental thing in that game that you can do that you're not made aware of that you can do. Until you get a manual page in the game, because that's how the game works, is you get manual pages and they give you hints. So you just straight up get a manual page that tells you you have this ability and you've already- you've always had this ability the whole time. And it's letting you progress even further. And I thought that was just amazingly brilliant, it was just perfect. <laughs> it was so good. I mean, I was annoyed, but at the same time I was like, that perfectly sums up this era of gaming, honestly. You know the irony? People wouldn't read manuals, but then they would go buy magazines like Nintendo Power to get tips, when sometimes these tips were in the manuals. That's on the PS5, right? Uh, it's on everything. But I'm playing on PC. Oh, maybe it might not be on the Switch. 
I'm not sure it's on the Switch, but it's definitely on the Xbox and uh, PlayStation at least. It might, well, it's, I think it might still be on the Xbox One because this is a game that was PS4, PS5. So I'm sure it would be like Xbox One and Series X as well. I don't know. Might have to look into that one. I mean, this is the point where I said that I could die, so it's alright. I mean, yeah, the time nerd is just... I've, I've said this before, it's, it's... Like, the irony of someone calling someone a nerd because they're into video games, whereas in... The people that were into sports... And into sports to the extent where they know, like, player stats and shit like that. And it's just like, okay, what's that? You have intricate knowledge of a topic, and you talk about this topic, and something lights up in your eyes as you talk about this topic? Hmm. Where have I heard that before? It wouldn't be that you're a sports nerd, is it? No, because jocks can't be nerds. That's the funny thing, like, I wish as the, the kind of mentality I had as, as, as an adult and just the retorts I have, I wish I could have gone back as a, a younger kid and just said that. It's, you know, much like they don't give a fuck about my gaming thing, I don't give a fuck about anything sports related. It's just like, cool story, bro. Uh-oh. Uh, Tunic is not that new of a game. It's a few years old now. Your family still call you a nerd, you're okay with that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it, honestly, and I prefer... I honestly prefer people like that. I get along with them more. In my family, thankfully, all four of, all four of us brothers are nerds, so... You know, we have the, pretty much the same interests. <laughs> we have... Almost identical jobs, they're like adjacent to one another. So I was lucky in that regard. Oh, I, I don't have time for you. I will not abandon you, Yoshi! There we go, nine seconds to spare, that's fine. Okay, Ludwig, we'll go back. But yeah, I'm glad that as a society we've progressed to a hall where, like, the term nerd has kind of been blurred a bit. I think now to be, you know, made fun of for being into hobbies like that, like, you really have to be in, in deep in a rabbit hole. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with some of the stuff, like, again, I kind of like people that are very into a particular thing. Because it just means they have a similar mentality to me. Yeah, it's cool to like anime now, exactly. I think it's now to be thought of as like... And even that is, is changing as well. And I, I, I'm gonna say it, but I'm not saying it because I believe this, just to be crystal clear. It's just the sentiment I get. But I think like... Nerd in the bad sense of, you know, jocks making fun of people, or the concept of a modern jock, would now be like if they're into, say, hand fin hand painted figurines, stuff like Warhammer and that sort of stuff. But even that is, is kind of 
it's not going to be the case for much longer. Like, even D&D &D is fashionable. <laughs> Whereas in... It wasn't too long ago where it was just this thing where, I guess, you know, it's just how nerds socialize and... It was like a gang of outcasts playing the game. But that's not the case anymore. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a, uh, a range of anime. But it's more, uh, accepted. I forgot how you do this. Oh, that's not gonna work. And now Yoshi's gone. Joshi, come back! I may have, uh, screwed myself over. Yeah, have fun, Colrin. I should just start the stage again. I don't know why I'm trying to bring Yoshi with me. I don't think it's necessary. But I may have just... Yeah. <laughs> have I screwed my... Well, kind of. Look, I don't think there's any reasonable way to bring Yoshi with you, so... Wait, what am I doing? So, I need that back, thank you. I have 60 seconds to do this. Good accuracy. <laughs> Just remembering this thing from The Simpsons. There was that character they had that was supposed to be Arnie. And he was describing a movie just how, you know, he has a son and then one day he dis he discovers his son is a nerd. And then the reporter is like, oh, that sounds funny. It's not a comedy. <laughs> it's just the implication of like, he murdered his- well, not murdered, but you know. The implication is there is like, being a nerd is such a bad thing that... Just went, uh, a bit over the deep end. Finding out his son was a nerd. Good. I've given up on trying to get all the dragon coins, especially since when you die, it just doesn't keep track of them. I think that's one of the things that was a bit of an oversight in this, is just having the incentive to get all of them and have it tracked, that would have been nice. Good. Because I don't... I don't remember... I don't remember if they were tracked in any way. This might just be false memory, it could just be a rum hack that has caused this memory, but... Oh my god, trampoline death. For some reason I remember like a little symbol next to the level to indicate that you had gotten all the dragon coins. But that very well could be a rum hack I played somewhere along the years. It's just probably a false memory. Much like the plot of this game. I'm 
I'm still in disbelief that we weren't rescuing Yoshi babies. No, I mean, the plot to this game, the way I remember it, and a few other people. With regards to the Yoshi eggs is that Bowser has just taken a bunch of Yoshi's eggs and you have to rescue, rescue them. And then at the end they hatch. Because you've rescued them. You know, save the baby Yoshis. But the actual plot is Bowser has trapped the Yoshis inside these eggs. So the egg is like a, I don't know, it's like, would you call it a torture device? Like a trap device. And so it's not that Yoshi is in naturally inside this egg. It's that Bowser has confined Yoshi to this device. And that's what's going on. It's not that the Yoshis are hatching, it's that they're being freed from this prison that <laughs> Bowser has put them into. Which is not what I remember at all. So, I don't know. I would chalk that one up to just localization at the end of the day. Like, sometimes in this era, the localization teams just went absolutely mental with the plots. And they were not really representative of what they were in Japan, so... I'm gonna chalk it up to that. lame story. I mean, it's a platformer. It's, it's not telling an epic tale by any regards. A lot of games have lame stories. It doesn't mean they're supposed to have a good one every time. I mean, Ori games are platformers, right, but Ori was developed in what year, and what year was this developed in? In this area, it was a case of pick and choose. What What is the game going to be? What can we focus our efforts on? Not every game has to have a good story. And it's certainly not what this series is known for. It's just like, the story is a loose thread. It just means you have some overall objective as to why the character exists and is doing its thing, but it doesn't have to be fantastic. And yeah, the two-up. I forgot that shit existed. <laughs> It was so weird to see that. I just completely forgot. I mean, 5-up I remember and 1-up, but 2-up? They also have three up with the moons. I remember the three ups in the moons, yeah. The two up, I, I just... I think that's the only condition you can get it, if I'm not wrong. It's very infrequent compared to the three up. The three up is just usually in a very difficult spot to get to it. And it's usually associated with a hidden exit as well.
Yay. That stage was always just... Relaxing, don't have to worry. It's like, hey, have a freebie. Take a break. Okay. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Underwater fortress. Ugh. I'm not going through the lower path. Get out of here. I will say, I think the ROM hacks I've played over the years have kind of ruined me when it comes to playing this in vanilla. I'm just thinking that certain things exist, or maybe things are harder than what they're going to be. Just false memories. I've heard Mario World ROM hacks have gotten pretty crazy in the last few years. There's been a few that have come out that I've been very tempted to take a look at. Because they have pretty unique mechanics. Like, I've seen one that's more or less, more or less like Celeste, for example. I've seen another where the entire ROM hack is played out on, on the world map. So it's like they use the world map as a... Uh, mechanic to play the game, which is just insane. So creativity for this game just never ceases to amaze me. Trent Reznor! Okay. <laughs> was this the- I think- I feel like this was the only boss that reached a certain point where you, you were just screwed if you didn't do it quick enough. A lot of old games have these modern communities. It's great. Honestly. That's why emulation is important. It's, it's thought of as such a negative thing in the industry, but... That's why the shit's important. Without that... Just... You wouldn't have any of this longevity. Games would just kind of fade. I was reading just... How dire it's become when it comes to... The availability of some of these older games is, well, older systems, I should say. And just the percentage of the games that are actually available through legal means. It's pretty low. Lower than you would think. And there's no real re well, outside of licensing bullshit, there's no real reason why you can't have these still kind of coexist on modern systems. It's okay. I'll, no, I'm not. Not fine. <laughs> like, video game companies use emulation when it benefits them. But then the rest of the time they're like, no, no, this is horrible. Fuck, what was it that- I think Nintendo said this, don't quote me on it. But like... It was a- it was something along the lines of that... It may have been in regards to the Dolphin emulator, but it was something like that... 
emulation kills in innovation effectively. Their argument was like, because people are stuck in the past, it means that there's no reason these players will invest in the future or some shit like that. Like, it was just such an asinine argument. Nintendo's just stupid. Yeah, I mean, I've said this multiple times. They make really good games, and they've made some of my favorite franchises ever. A lot of childhood memories. But when it comes to Nintendo, the company, uh, they're just evil. They can be very evil. So, I'd have to find the article, but it was just, it was over the dolphin emulator being removed over the Steam store, if I'm not mistaken. And the reasoning that they went after them is just like, oh, something about emulation killing innovation. Or the, the want to innovate. I don't think it was, they were saying that, oh, people don't innovate because of emulation. It was more like the incentive to innovate is less if people are just going to play old games. Something along those lines. And yet Nintendo themselves still release collections of old games and, you know, have the service, which one of the primary features is to be able to play old games. I don't know. I think the best argument you can just use to deflate, well, deflate their whole thing is just like, if that were the case, why are you offering a subscription service where pretty much the only reason people are getting this subscription service, let's be real, is to play your older games. Because your online connection is garbage. It just is. Like, it's a joke. It's an industry joke how bad Nintendo games are when it comes to online connectivity. It's like, it's a flip of the coins. If it's heads, the game is okay and passable with online play. If it's tails, it's going to be Mario Maker 2 where the game runs at like four frames a second if someone lags. <laughs> oh man. The other resurgence that I've been very happy to see, outside of like, you know, emulation keeping things alive, there are a lot of people developing new games for older hardware. It's become this thing that's popped up in like the last, I don't know, like six, seven years. And it's getting even more popular. It's just, I guess maybe because they like the hardware, maybe because they want to challenge themselves with something that has restrictions. But there have been some really good titles coming out for older hardware. And titles that they're releasing on physical cartridges that you can play on the old hardware. Which is pretty neat. And I feel like that there's no reason that can't be the norm either. If Nintendo were to re like reissue old popular games as cartridges, that could make a killing, much like the music world, vinyl has made a, uh, a comeback. I feel like you could do the same with some of these older hardware. Like, if the Nintendo Mini, imagine if it had what it had, but then could also play the cartridges as well. And then Nintendo was like, we're gonna release anniversary editions of these cartridges. They could charge whatever the fuck they wanted <laughs> for that. I saw Atari's doing that, that they're releasing... They're releasing a 2600 plus... That still plays the older cartridges, but then comes with like 10 games. And then they're gonna be re-releasing older cartridges. I think it's a cool idea.
It just depends how well it runs. It's like, I, it's going to be a thing that uses emulation, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But when you compare it to this thing, like what I'm playing this on right now, um, the Super NT, which is an FPGA console, it just has its, its advantages over just plain emulation. Once I beat this castle, I'm gonna find the quote that Nintendo said. <laughs> I feel like just for context, so I'm not not just saying stuff without like referencing the original quote or what was said. I don't want to be like misinforming people, but I'm pretty sure it was something along those lines. This mechanic was so cool when I saw it the first time. Not so cool in Janked Up Mario Party. <laughs> the stage was just a living nightmare. Yeah, I mean... I feel like after Super Mario Bros. 3... There could have been a little more... Uh, I mean, this one's probably a bit creative. But just... The boss fight's being a little different. Instead of it being the usual, oh, stomp on their head three times. Quickly. If you do it quick enough... Oh! If you do it quick enough, then no threat. This fight's cool, though. I mean, sprites rotating like this. <laughs> this fucking technology back in the day. Wow. That thing can rotate. Game of the year. Zoom and rotate and spin. Okay, hang on. What was that like? Yeah, this is it. I was right. All right, so hang on. <laughs> I like this one as well. Ludwig von Cooper's days of composing Cooper symphonies in Castle Number Four over the Forest of Illusion lies ahead. Mario must use his brain to solve the puzzle of this per perplexing forest. Yeah. So when Nintendo took down the Dolphin emulator, their argument was. Yeah, this is the sentence. Using illegal emulators or illegal copies of games harms development and ultimately stifles innovation. That's the direct quote. I love how they use, they use the word illegal twice there. <laughs> it's just like, no, you guys are breaking the law when it's just, I'm sorry. Emulators have a legal stance. You can use them legally. If they were illegal, if they were illegal, Nintendo wouldn't be able to use them themselves. There are studies that even pirated copies increase the sales. Yeah, I had a, um, a university lecturer that wrote a thesis on how piracy actually helps sales in some regards. And there's a lot of evidence of this, right? It's, it's one that- the, uh, the argument for piracy pretty much is, if someone's going to pirate your game, they fall into two camps. It's either someone that can't afford it right away, and then... They probably will buy it later. 
Or maybe they, they're short on money and they just want to see if it's worth it. Or someone that will never ever spend money on your stuff anyway. So it make it's like you're not you're not gonna lose money on someone that was never going to buy your product in the first place. So all piracy can do really is like it's either people that were never going to pay for it in the first place. So either way, you're not losing money. Just this like somehow oh because someone the movie industry does the same thing. They go oh because. They downloaded this movie, we lost all this money. Like, how can you lose money that no one spent in the first place? Anyway, that's a separate argument. But, yeah, it's, it's just, people fall into those camps, pretty much. It could also be a case where maybe they pirate the first game, but then when the next game comes out, they might have the means to be able to purchase the next game, and because they they were able to enjoy the first one in such a manner, they might purchase the next game. It gets people into your, your world. The same kind of applies with, with music, right? Like, there's this whole fight right now with... Just record labels thinking, oh, we need to stop streamers from playing our music. They're hurting our sales. People aren't buying our mu people aren't buying music. They're like sharing this music illegally. When there's like so many studies that have come out that show the main way people find music these days, a really high percentage find their music from um I guess let's call them influencers, online personalities, whether it's like TikTok, Twitch, YouTube, it, it doesn't matter. But like, the, the way people find music these days is a lot through these avenues. And furthermore, there's a lot of evidence to support that like, that does lead to people buying stuff. So, I don't know. It's just... I don't know if it's something that'll ever change, but it's just the current decision makers, they just have this boomer mentality. Where they feel like by controlling the media to a point, they can kind of charge however they want. Because the way things used to be, and this is well before my time, they'd release a movie or some sort of, you know, let's call it interactive medium. And they'd go, okay, cool, we're going to release it in America, like, in this month, we're going to release it in Europe in this month, we're going to release it in Australia this month, and that way we have money coming in all throughout the year, and they would project shit that way. But, you know, the world is such a small place now, it's just, you, that just, that sort of shit just doesn't work. Not with the internet. And it's a case of, like, piracy ultimately is a result of Either things not being available, or things not being available at a fair price. And that's ultimately what piracy is. Availability and pricing. And availability can be just either a game not being made available, or a game just no longer being supported, and they just decide to take it down for some reason. And I point this to, like, you know, Nintendo and their stores, just... Oh, we can't legally purchase Wii U games anymore. What's the result? Piracy. It's a problem they cause themselves, and then complain that it exists. They identify that the platform's no longer making money, but then when people have some sort of interest in it, they're like, Hey, we're losing money. Oh cool, no worries, I'm happy to pay for this, can you give me a way to buy this? No, we shut down our Wii U store because it's not viable anymore. But you just said that you're losing money. It's like, yeah, we're losing money. When you pirate this game that we no longer deemed valuable anymore, we're losing money. Like, it's, it's just... Oh, it gives me a headache. <laughs> anyway. Not to go on too much of a rant, but... 
Oh, well. I suppose there is a little bit of that as well, just... People pirate games, they don't agree with company policies anymore that they don't want to support. Uh, I mean, that's a, that's a form of protest, which is a little different. I'll have to find that article that talked about just as a percentage, because the study went console by console, and then they they looked at each console and came up with a percentage of, like, how many titles are still accessible today through, quote, legal means. And it's just some- it's, it's kind of sad. There's just a lot of games that you can't access anymore. I mean, granted, not- it, like, it's one of those things. There are some games you could argue don't deserve- like, no one's realistically gonna play them anymore because they were just that bad. Yoshi! God damn it. But then you get into the business of drawing arbitrary la lines in the sand, like, what's the metric of defining whether or not a game should be accessible, you know? But even on systems that you would think are popular, or have had collections released... ...over the years, that you feel like, oh, no, I, I think, like, the Super Nintendo, for example, has had a lot of availability over the years. But... ...if you look at it now, it's pretty much just what's on Nintendo Switch Online, and then what was on the SNES Mini. Those are the latest releases, and then, if you look at the total... ...number of Super Nintendo games released... It's not a lot. Oh yeah, and there's of course the individual collections that like companies like Capcom and Konami have just released separately, but you can still get them. But it's just a small fraction of what's available. And while some of these games might not have, let's say, the same mass appeal or just universal acclaim, there are some... Sometimes a game might mean more to someone because they played it as a kid and they didn't really think about standards and stuff. Like, I played a game, I rented a game as a kid once that, you know, in retrospect, it was bad, and it's widely considered one of the worst Super Nintendo games, but I had fun with it, and I have this weird nostalgia for it. And there's just no way for me to access that game unless A, I go get a second-hand copy of it, which I'm sure I could do, it's not hard, as it's not a popular game. <laughs> but, I can't, like... It's it's something that could be made available on on the Switch somehow, but it's just not. I'm gonna clear this whole thing out. So bear with. What game is it? I'm kind of ashamed to say, but Space Ace on the Super Nintendo. Absolutely horrendous port. <laughs> Considered one of the worst Super Nintendo games of all time. But I enjoyed that thing for what it was. And I kept playing it because I wanted to beat it. Like, I just had... This feeling of, I want to beat this. It might have been sunken cost fallacy because just... Never heard of it. Okay, well... Have you heard... The game is a port of... The game is called Space S as well, but it's in the series of, um, like... Dragon's Lair. Um, what's the other one? But those games where, like, you know, it's a, it's a video and then... Something happens on the screen, and then you have to press a button. 
the earliest example of QTE. So Space Ace was uh, a game that was released by the same company. It wasn't in the series or anything, but it had the same animator. Um, very nice looking animation. The Super Nintendo port was nothing like that. It was all sprite based and they tried to translate what was happening in these animations into a platformer. And the platformer was just fundamentally flawed. Like, if I think if the platforming was less jank, it probably could have been, like, an average game. Not amazing, but definitely not the infamy that it had. But this game, if you try it, I don't know a single person that tries this game and then doesn't die in the first five seconds. That's how bad it is. <laughs> like, the game kind of just starts, and it, to its credit... It's like recreating what happens in in the full, you know, original game. And it it's pretty faithful. Like it recreates everything as a platformer stage pretty faithfully. And I think the vision is is good. It's just it does not play well. The problem comes down to your character is is kind of too big. And so there's not a whole lot of room on stage and you just keep getting hit by shit if you're not careful. But I guess that's where it becomes just a challenge, is like, if you're really good at it and you learn it, you can get pretty far in the game. It's just, I think it, it crosses the line of being frustrating too early. It's a game that I believe that if they cleaned it up just a little bit, it would have been better. But anyway. Widely regarded as one of the worst Super Nintendo games ever. Check it out if you're morbidly curious. The original game is great. The original game that's like an arcade game and then they ported it over to PC and then eventually there's like a... a PS4 collection of it, I believe. They're great. You did? Holy shit, that's terrible. Yeah. But that's the thing, is like, so there's no way for me to be able to play that game again unless I get a second-hand copy of it, right? But given Nintendo's service, there's no reason why that game can't be on there. Like, they could... I guess it's one of those things where it's just like, I, I imagine they don't want to pay licensing for a game that no one will really want to play. So the, resort, the end result is like, I either source a second-hand game, and if I don't have a second-hand Super Nintendo, I have to get that, and then I have to find a way to be able to hook it up to a modern TV. Or I use emulation and, quote, pirate the thing. Or the game just becomes lost to history. Which I don't think it should be. Like, it, even the worst game has a story behind it for someone, you know? And I, I feel like someone playing that game, there's lessons, if you're an aspiring game developer, there could be lessons out of it. As long as you have the original copy of the game, you have the license. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's kind of a gray area, because there are some countries that allow that, allow that, and it's, it's never black and white, it's just like, it, it's tricky. In most countries, it's sane enough to say you can make a backup of the game. It's part of consumer rights, but... I think, I think when it comes down to it, and this is just like, you know, pie in the sky dream, I don't think it's ever going to happen. But I think shit needs to enter the public domain sooner, it just needs to.
I think it should be a case of like particular video games. Once a console is stop has stopped being manufactured, at that point there's a countdown timer of 15 years. After that point, it's just like that's it. They should not be realistically making money out of this. They have the right, like they they have the right to release collections of the game and sell it again. But then, if people want to emulate it, let them emulate it. The only, the only version of piracy would be, like, if they're pirating a copy of, like, the collection of the game later. That's, that's what I think. Because public domain, and this is purely because of Disney, it's so unreasonable, it's like, okay, so the games that I grew up with, I will never see them enter the public domain. That's just the reality of it. I won't be alive when that happens. And I think that's such a sad thing. And it's all because of basically the 1%. It's like, oh, because of the Marios and the Sonic the Hedgehogs and the Mickey Mouse characters. That's why other games, they'll never enter the public domain. With, they could probably get a resurgence. That's the thing. Sometimes things get a resurgence. Because way after the fact of their re original release, maybe someone plays them and brings them back into the limelight. That stuff has happened. Particularly with music. <laughs> like with any anything that became a closing theme of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, for example, the music had a resurgence, like people listening to that artist all of a sudden, after so many years. Same with, um, Stranger Things. Like what, Kate Bush? That was the latest one. Just restricting access to older things is just such a stupid idea. I don't- I don't think they realize how much they're shooting themselves in the foot. In terms of, like, something... Something having a resurgence, you know? I think it would be great if I could play sp I, I could just turn on my Switch right now and be like, hey, this is Space Ace, let's have a conversation about this game. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how bad it was. Oh. Terrible level of background. Oh, the scrolling. Yeah, I mean... Nostalgia goggles for me, I didn't even notice it, but you're probably right. It's moving a little too quickly. Alright, we're at the Forest Fortress. I don't know if I want to do this in one sitting, I probably can. Alright, maybe with the, like, console thing of 15 years, it should be, like... After a game stops being supported, there's probably the better one, because then it would tie it too close to the console. But just at the point at which it's effectively abandoned, there should be no reason that just a reasonable countdown begins. And it's like, well, the per well, the publisher, the person, whatever, the company that made this game isn't really interested in maintaining it. They've kind of acknowledged themselves that they're not making money off it anymore, so just public domain after a certain, a reasonable amount of time. And reasonable not being, like, the lifespan of a human being. Probably wishful thinking. It's never gonna happen.
Oops. This path. Oh yeah. There's a reason to do this. If you're a super player! Oh yes! <laughs> my inner child is happy because that's something my cousin could do. Because he knew, he knew how to fly. I did not. Yeah, 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 I'm hurrying up. Resnor again. Again, not going to Star Road, but it's there. Now, if I'm not wrong, this will go horizontally across. I just have to... Ugh. Joshy! Joshi, please. I feel like this was bad overall. But see, this is the path that I got the first time, so where's the alternate path? I will find it. Good. I'm just gonna keep going up. Ah, <laughs> uh, not high enough. I'll try fly over it. I don't know. Yeah, it's not that. What is it? I don't remember. But I'll be damned if I go through this game without finding it. I will get every path. I oh, know it is this one. Okay, never mind. Got it. Okay, so all that's left is the hidden exit here. Next set is just a key from memory. I think I know where it is. Ugh, damn it. No feather. Can't get the feather. Unless I hurry. 
damn it, those are fish. <sighs> it's okay. Now, if I really want to cheese this. Completely valid. Just get another cape. Choose not to get that. I have to remember where this key is. tried. Just perfectly the amount of space for me not to get it. is back this way. There we go. I don't know what I thought was going to happen there. Anyway. It's fine. Oh no, I missed on a- I missed out on a two-up with 98 lives. I should start again. Okay. Now I guess just get to the end. Hold on, ooh, hang on, is this the end or the secret end? Because I remember these Forest of Illusion stages, the secret end is the real end, and everything else is just not. <laughs> Go back. job. I almost butchered it. Alright. We're getting that. That's... Home stretch ish. 
I guess if you don't count the special world and star world, but those stages don't take too long. Holy crap, look at my score! Over one million points. I don't think the points have any relevance, at least not to my knowledge. At least in Mario 3, the points did something in the overworld. Which is probably the reason the points exist in the first place, because... From what I remember... Is this game started its life as like a port of Mario 3. So it's probably just a, a remnant. That maybe they thought they were going to do something with and then never did. I thought this was the one that you keep going down in. I... Mistook this for another castle. That's my bad. attention <laughs> make sure I don't mess up again I mean you know it's gonna be a short level when all the coins are stacked like that I see no reason to hit the switch but with sunglasses. They can just <laughs> do this too. Oh shit. Okay, I need a- it needs to be more in the middle. There we go. That should have happened sooner. <laughs> Oops. Congratulations! This one's great. <laughs> Mario found his way through the Forest of Illusion and has put an end to Roy Cooper of Castle Number 5. Onward to the dangerous but tasty Chocolate Island. Chocolate Island 1. The other dinosaur... Did, I don't know if we've seen this... This enemy in another game. I'm trying to think. I mean, I, granted I haven't played all the Mario games ever, but... Not sure if these have made an appearance ever again. Wow. 
Joshi. How dare you attack my friend? There we go. That's the one. That's the one I was looking for. Oh, I thought there was a dragon coin here. <laughs> Everything's fine. I thought for a second I'd have to throw Yoshi into the abyss again. Okay, ghost house. So far, I've been pretty good at remembering where the exits are. Oh, this one. Oh, I hate this enemy. Okay, I'm going with this just because I don't want to lose cape. Knew it. Oh, shit. Well, okay, it's, it's this thing. I can do this. I think it's over here that you need to do it, actually. Oh, my headset turned off. That's great. Yeah, it's over here. I need to bring him over here. Come here. This is something that I never really used as a kid. But it has, it has its point. There we go. That would be the secret exit, most likely. <sighs> and then I gotta get the standard one. What does that even- I feel like all the ghost houses had two exits, but then where would this one even go? Maybe I'm wrong. Let's just see. Here are the coins you collect, or the time remaining can change your progress. Can you find a special goal? But they don't say- yeah. I honestly forget the gimmick of this. There's like a specific number you need to hit. And I don't remember what it is. This is like, hey, refer to a magazine.
<laughs> I have no idea if I got this right. Why is this here? Or is this just the only way to get across if you don't have the switches? It's something that probably isn't obvious. Good. Alright, well, that's a screw up. <laughs> L. Great. I got it right. I was thinking it was like a multiplier of... ...of, uh, five. Well, this is different, oh yeah. What a weird stage. Okay, just take the L. I got it. Would not be able to tell what I did to get it, but I feel like it was the multiplier of five. Oh yeah, there's that stage. I should go back and do that stage. Forgot about that stage. The old peanuts. Check, but like in janked up Mario Party, <laughs> I call those things peanuts instead of footballs. Ah, oh, I didn't hit anything else. Lame. So I could have gotten a lot of one-ups. Said I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Said I wouldn't do that. But you know, realistically, that's what I would do. Flying all the way. Yeah. Okay, so that leads to six. Hold on. Ugh, the problem is... Oh man, backtracking is going to be painful. <laughs> I kind of wish I didn't notice. Okay. I don't think Star Road links up until you complete the stages either. It won't be so bad.
I completely forgot. And then, yeah, the pipe ends up there, see? I missed a large part of the map. Alright. <laughs> Painful backtracking. Donut secret too. I should have done this ages ago. Flying. <laughs> Said I would do that. Even though every fiber of my being wants to fly. Got it. Alright. <laughs> What's that worth? The backtrack? I'm not so sure. Well, at least this is all clear now. Alright, back to where I was. This is another one of these stages where the secret exit goes forward, I think. And the other one just leads you back in a circle. I remember that previous stage, it did confuse me as a kid. And I just, I don't think I'd be able to put my finger on it, <laughs> like what I did to finish it back then. I feel like I just repeated the stage over and over again, and then it was just magically done. Sorry, it doesn't matter if I screw up here. I got cape. I why am I doing this? I have 99 lives. Stop. <laughs> Almost 1.5 million points and 99 lives. Stop. <laughs> you don't have to collect coins. Can't help it. Wait. Oh. Is this... Yeah, this is one of these stages where... Hold on. Yeah, three more lives. As if I didn't have enough lives already. Alright, but... <laughs> gonna go back. So I wanna... I wanna do the normal exit. Every exit will be found. I should probably make it if... I have to go do a stage a second time that I'm allowed to fly through it if I want to. Ah, but at this point I've, I've gone this far without doing that. This is like perfect Joshi sta st stage. So many blue shells. Right, 
Let's just... Just to make the path go around in a circle. Chocolate Fortress. Escape that one. Ha ha. Okay, there we go. Good old crouch jump. You know, at a certain. I, I didn't read manuals, and I'm not sure this would have been covered in the manual. But at a certain point, spin jumping on top of enemies like this, it's something that I feel like, I don't know. At a certain point I would have learned about it, but I don't remember that. It's just, just has always been a thing for me with this game. And the ROM hacks associated with it. And even back through the original playthrough, there were just certain enemies that I would just do this to. But I don't rem remember ever I guess if I was to guess my cousin, but then how did he learn how to do it? I don't know. There's certain things I do in these older games that I just would not be able to tell you how I started doing them in the first place. Maybe discovering it by accident. It's possible because of Yoshi being able to bounce off it. It's like, oh, it's a thing. Wee! Wee! Ah. Just trying to go through it. I know I don't have to get that, but I want to get it. I mean, it's it's trivial. One of these, ha yeah, there you go. Bow, 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 bow. I remember, this is just... Ah, that was the right one. It's okay. Oh no, I missed that on one of those one-ups. <laughs> I was going purely off memory, but it failed me. love to have gone through one of these without making a single mistake. Mm -hmm. 
Does pause make you skip a lot of the stage? But, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I should avoid them. But I guess I'm just playing through this the way I, I would. I played this game to death. And I'm just taking the paths I would always take. I have taken the longer road a couple times, but for the most part. Good. Ah! I messed up the timing. It's gone. Not that I need the lies, but you know. <laughs> it does feel good when you get it. Okay. We're up to Wendy's now. I think this is the castle I mistook earlier. It has a lower path when you follow the snake. Just gone. I don't know what I was thinking there. It's okay. I'll wait. I probably could have gone, but I'll wait. Ooh, no. <laughs> I was about to go. Time for Wendy! I love janked up Mario Party's version of this fight was just in the strawberry water. I mean, strawberry milkshake. Just to make this harder. The strawberry milkshake reversed your controls, it was just water. So you had to swim with reverse controls and then drop onto Wendy. Very simple way of making a fight that I guess it's harder, but... <laughs> I mean, I certainly didn't do it well here. Oh yeah, the <laughs> this one's great. They're all good. Wendy O. Cooper in Castle Number 6 has sung her last song, Mario must meet the challenge that is now before him. There is a sunken ship that appears to be a gateway to the Valley of Bowser. We're near the end. The stage was cool. The big reveal. She kind of makes this a little bit of a liability, but I'll get through it. Mm. 
Thank you, Downswim. There we go, the big one. You could do that if you wanted to. There's no way I was going to get all the dragon coins. It rewards memory. Also, the stuff going to fall on me? Yes, I think. <laughs> Is there something at the bottom of this? I can't remember. Ah! <laughs> Too far. I can't remember if there was something at the bottom of this. There was nothing. I don't know why I just vaguely remember there being one-ups, but I think there are. They just fall, and you need to be quick to get them. It's also hard to tell how fast you're descending until it's too late. Good. I fucked it up at the very last second. Good job. Pretty much make it through that whole segment just by swimming without stopping. The game is not cruel. It's not going to put a ghost directly on top of you. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, nice. There's a refill. What am I doing? Just finish, just finish the stage. Valley of Bowser. Not long. How long has it been? Oh. Not bad. I mean, this will end up being like roughly four hours long, which I think is acceptable. I haven't played it at the fastest pace. I haven't been doing stuff like flight, but I mean, otherwise, I think it's fine. Well, especially since I haven't played in <laughs> a very long time. I've made this so much harder on myself. There we go. Shit! Ah, oh, the kit box. What 
Aber dann... Ist okay. Bam, 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 bam. May as well. Not that I needed it. Wait, can I get... Surely, yeah, there we go. I'm just going. I think if I just get it wrong, just stop. Oh, there's a... Wait, I'm back here. That was not beneficial. Oh, I think I know where this one is. I need the cape, so I have to hold on to the cape. Good. Love a plan B. <laughs> Shouldn't need it, but you never know. Hmm? Ah, oh, it's a cap again. Oh, it's not this. Ugh, I feel like it was fly up, but it might not be this part. This is probably the hardest this game gets, I think. for this. <laughs> I don't need to. Okay, go, 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 go. Wait, no, not here. I'm going out of my way to get those coins. So I feel like they're on the way. Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> that last part. It's just a shame that I have to repeat this. Okay, first this, then that. Damn it, I messed it up. I was trying to fly over the whole thing. See that it was off screen. It's okay, I can get my backup on here. I think there's one more state, just like this, it just takes a while because of this. the cycle. <laughs> Time stretch. I'm surprised I didn't murder it. I mean, I'll do this route first, then we'll worry about the rest. Oh, this shit. Okay, hold on. I, I have to. Yeah! <laughs> I'll ruin a couple childhoods with that one. Did you know that Mario's ass can destroy most things? It's true. Mario has an indestructible booty in this game. That was dumb. Thank you. 
I forget how this one works specifically. Okay, I remember now. Coincidentally, I think I just got the standard exit. <laughs> There's also the other one. Warrior's not the only one that has a bulbous bottom. to make a star. Hmm? It's not that. Hold on. Is it really not that? I swear it's that. Maybe you only get one chance for it. Shit. No. <laughs> I messed up. Yeah. <laughs> I have to do that every time. <laughs> got it. Not that I'm going to use it, but got it. <sighs> well, that sucked. The stage is fun. Would I ever call cannons in this? <laughs> Am I wrong? Oh. Yeah. This is more of a safeguard than me wanting to actually do something with it. 
It's just uh, acting as a collision thing. Alright, it wasn't necessary. Oh, this shit. Wait, immune? Oh, it doesn't. Oh, doesn't matter. Don't remember those things being immune to fire, but I guess they are, huh? Hey, Gammy, what's up? Getting my bearings on where I am. I think it just made me go backwards. How's it looking, Ben? Alright. Kind of quiet, but alright. What? No! Oh, did I need that? I'm not sure. I guess I'll just do the standard exit. Oof, lucky. Surprise that worked. <laughs> Oh, you need Yoshi. Okay. That'd explain it. Um. Crap, what's a quick stage that I can get Yoshi from? Hold on. one. No, not this one. Where is it? One of these has Yoshi very early on. Is this Mario World? Yeah, it's Mario World. There it is. Now I just need to survive the stage without losing Yoshi. Oh, wait a minute. How am I supposed to take Yoshi with me? There has to be a Yoshi in the stage somewhere. Yeah, what the hell? There has to be a Yoshi in the stage somewhere. There! <laughs> Did I just not touch that block? <laughs> what the hell? Alright, whatever. I 
I guess I just dismissed it too quickly, huh? Yeah, I don't care about the one-up. More than okay for one-ups. Your shake. <laughs> Damn it. This is gonna take a couple of attempts. Oh, right. Um I can't go backwards. So how do I do this? It's like I think it's L R and then so you pick the stage. No? How do you do it? I don't want to do, like, the accidental console resort, re reset shortcut. Uh, what is it? It's... There's a button... I swear there's a button combination. So I don't like this sign. Oh, I swear it was. I'm gonna have to finish the stage. I swear there was a way to do this. Like just be able to cancel the checkpoint out, but I don't remember completely what it is. Guess just finish the stage. Shouldn't be too bad. That's yeah, already over. Alright. <laughs> if I could do that with Yoshi. This is for a payoff that I'm not even gonna use. It's just for percentage slash. I guess nostalgia, I don't know. Do not get the checkpoint, then if I fail, I can just try again easily. That, that's everything, it's up to two castles. Oh, and Star World, Special World, which I'm doing after these two castles. So we're, we're at the end of this. Castle always stressed me out as a kid just because of this. Spikes everywhere and then these things. One of them was going to get me. At least it was on the edge, so... Those things can be an insta-kill. Alright, Trent Reznor, let's go.
That's only a joke I made <laughs> as a teenager. I didn't know who that was as a kid. Okay, that just leaves this, and then we can go to Star World and do the rest of the game. Yeah, this was the dungeon I was confusing earlier that had the the snake that keeps going. So I just followed the snake to my death instead of a secret, which I thought it was. Well, Alright, I'll come back. We can just hang out here for a little bit. See? I just got impatient and took damage like an idiot. I saw this as like a nice time saver slash relaxation period. I was trying to bounce off these things and just go forward, but... It's not up to the skill level required. Good. Yeah, this is the one you follow down. It's a mechanic to go forward. I want my backup shrimp. Uh oh, I probably should not have done that. Well, hurry up, respawn. Forty seconds, it's fine. Plenty of time. I think. I hope. Got it. <laughs> Twenty five seconds to spare, it's fine. What did he, oh, yeah, he picks up the car. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was like, what does he do in this one? And then I remembered. He picks it up. Mario has defeated Larry Cooper in castle number seven. All that is left is Bowser's castle, where Princess Toadstool is being held. Can Mario rescue her and restore peace to Dinosaur Land? Okay. Well, we're not doing that yet. We have the other part of the game to do. But if I was playing this normally, I'd be doing this stuff first, but Star World and all the other stuff associated with it.
I hope this this works. Okay. It's like a pretty heavy gamble, but we'll see. <laughs> Shit. It did not work. I thought it would travel further than that. See how this one goes. The hell, the camera's following me now. Oh my god! <laughs> Too short. Ugh, I'm doing it again. Why didn't the camera follow before? I knew I was doing the right thing. It was just weird that the camera didn't follow. Alright, whatever. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Again, I got this. Just let it go. Okay, up, across, 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 up, across. Hopefully that's enough. With Yoshi it definitely would have been enough, just ditch Yoshi and I get it. There we go, there we go, that's better. No! <laughs> oh god. Still not enough. I'm getting a Yoshi. I'm getting a Yoshi. This is just- this process is gonna be so much easier. Even if it's Yoshi the sacrificial lamb, it doesn't matter. like to get through this in the next the half hour if possible but we'll see a couple of the special stages can be really tricky wait it's a mistake all right Go high. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> Got it. Sacrificial yet lamb. All right, but that goes to special world. We're not doing that yet. 
Now to just finish the stage normally. I don't have to do this now, don't I? No. Oh, I kind of still need to do this. But I guess I can just let it keep going straight in a straight line. Serious, this is another way I could have done it. I could have just done it this way as well. Man, that complicated the shit out of this one. Um, if I fall, will I die? Yes. <laughs> Damn it. Alright, slightly to the slightly to the left. Got it. Alright, I got this. Sometimes you have to take leap of faith. This is where the 99 lives are gonna come in handy. So some of the stuff I would not be able to tell you how I learnt how to do it. With a trial and error or just, I don't know, discovering on one... on one's own time. Surely just to link the star road. Right. Ah! <laughs> Damn it. Ah, it's an L. I had it, I just misstepped once. Not that I need the lives, but it's just... Feels bad. This one's a fun one. I always enjoyed this one. There's just something satisfying about just breaking all the bricks in this. At least to climb back up to the top as well. Key is to be honest. Mm. 
There we go. Joshy! This is just the end of the stage. It's not what I need to do. Just send this. <laughs> I need to find the key. Now that I have this, now it's easier. It's a fun thing to do, to be honest, like that. Kind of just stomping through stuff. on the right hand side then. I can fly though, so that's a plus. There is a semblance of backtracking in this. To do that. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. That's fine. I'll find it. There it is. Uh, shit. I want that, Yoshi. unfortunate. I might come back into the stage just purely just to get <laughs> the, the superior Yoshi. Yes, give the lives. Sorry, Yoshi. I'm gonna have to say bye because I want the other Yoshi. I would always come back to the stage to get this Yoshi. This was my get the good Yoshi stage. I think it's a hard requirement for one of these anyway. Okay, hang on. I'm gonna do this properly. Okay, it's that one. Nearly there. Yeah, this is the stage I'm thinking of. 
Does... Now, I know I said I would want to not fly through every stage, but this stage, straight up, this is the best way to do this stage. This Yoshi and then just keep grabbing shells and just go. This is the most fun way to experience this stage. It's okay. Oh yeah, and this part, watch. Yeah! <laughs> Alright. There we go, Star Road complete completed, and now the fun stuff begins. I want- I want this soundtrack to play for a bit, so I'm gonna use this opportunity to get- get a refill of my drink. So listen to this theme, because you have to wait a while and then something special kicks in. And you wouldn't know unless it kicked it in, so I feel like I can't do this game justice without letting that theme kick in. So give me like 30 seconds to get a drink and you get to hear some cool music as well. I don't know if you would consider this an easter egg, but I know a lot of people don't know about this song. I found this out by mistake, because I just was being called into another room, and then when I came back I was like, whoa. It'll happen eventually. I can't remember how long the loop is, but then it plays a special thing. There. Just a nice rendition of the classic theme. But you wouldn't know it unless you sat and listened to this loop for a while. And it's so good. <laughs> so there's a nice little easter egg if you aren't aware of it. And it goes well with the, uh, the little beat in the background as well. You know, I bet that logo confused North Americans, because their controller did not look like that. Whereas in... Ours did. That logo at the top, <laughs> it's the Famicom logo, which is also... The European and uh, Australian Super Nintendo controller colors. Anyway, that's just a little Easter egg. Also, these stages uh, these stages have a naming convention of uh, like very nineteenth terminology. I know, I'm chasing it a little.
That's an exit, not an entry. That's it. So this one's called Nali, and then there's just so, so many other themes. We. I just want to see Yoshi consume. Tubular, yeah. No one says that ever. I've, Gnarly is still a thing these days. Tubular? I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that unironically, ever. That's 80s, for sure. But it makes sense. It's, it's a stage about pipes. These stages are a lot harder. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry, Yoshi. <laughs> Poor Yoshi. Way cool. Oh boy. I have bad memories of the stage. Because I think some of these can take, yeah. They take you to a pitfall and you die! Oh shit. Okay, it's fine. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I think from memory you can just bounce off these things and finish the stage that way, but it's okay. Right, Joshy. If I had Joshy, I would be rewarded for my efforts. I doing? Okay, well, that's that stage. These shouldn't take me too long. I think the hardest one was the previous stage. Awesome! It's a normal word. This was modern day, you know, modern day, one of those stages would just be called W. <laughs> That's what we've reached as a society. physics. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> That's the fake out. I think you can keep going, but... I don't know why I brought this with me. Very 70s. 
This is the stage from the, uh... The opening credits. Well, the title screen. Look at me, I'm playing the title. It's a good way to do this level. <laughs> Mondo. I don't know. I've, that's one I've never heard. I I've heard of Tubular, but I've never heard of Mondo. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, it's fine. Pressing the wrong button, like, <laughs> I keep getting off Yoshi. So, I mean, the stage is called Mondo. I don't think it has any reflection on what's going on in the stage. Like, Wakel and Tubular at least represented the stage to some degree. Oh, a stage involving ice. I get it. A stage involving pipes. I get it. Okay, now that I think about it, this might be the hardest stage of the, uh, the special stages. It's fine. I need this for a very specific purpose. <laughs> That was the purpose! <laughs> I was right there. Shit. How am I gonna do this now? I have to use the cannon fire. Okay. I don't know if I can do it. That's so annoying, man. I was right there. I'm not sure I can do this without that now. Whatever. Just iframe it. When in doubt, iframe it out. Ah, oh, cherry tomato! Just 
just gotta do this again now without Yoshi. I'll try my best not to eat shit. <laughs> Damn it. I'm so close. Dragon coins. Okay. I'm gonna take my time on this one. Joshi! You'll make everything better. I love how he can just eat fire with no problem. Oh my god! I hate those things. <laughs> There's no checkpoint in this either. Let's just get through the whole damn stage in one go. Okay, I got Joshy now. I don't know why I didn't just do that. <laughs> Sorry, Yoshi. I have a stage to finish. <laughs> Something. Funky. All right, final stage. Oh yeah, this had the green fruit mechanic. That's all well and good, but how do I get Joshi? Jeez. I think you have to be like running at full force. Hmm. 
There's not a whole lot of wiggle room in the stage. I feel like I should just go. Like, the whole gimmick with the stage is you do not have any time whatsoever. Yoshi's green fruit helps, but... I think you can still run to the end of it without it. You are a super player, that's what it says. <laughs> Spoiler! And the reward now. The reward for doing all this. The world changes a different color, and then when you go on a stage, enemies are different for some reason. Like, the Koopas become these things. I don't know what these were ever supposed to be, but... <laughs> I was so confused as a kid. Still am now! But th there's other differences. But yeah, the world is, uh... I guess in a different season? I don't know how- I don't know how else to describe it. Like, now we're in full. Star Road looks nice. It looks more like a star now. Anyway, we are here. We're going through the front door. Back door, you just start from the halfway point. That's all you need to know. I don't know what door I used to pick as a kid, so we'll go... Three. Oh, this one. I, I like this concept of just alternate alternate pathways to take every time. So like every time you played this game, you could make it unique. Five, six, seven, we'll do seven. It's a nice thing for replay value, honestly. There we go. And this is where the back door would start you. So, that skips quite a bit. There we go. Dun dun dun. The last time I fought this... It really sucked, because the, the ROM hack just subverted expectations and made it ridiculously hard. So I still have that memory pretty fresh. I just have to do my best to uh, not... Not brick it too hard. This looks so incredible though. And when you compare it to what happened on the NES, this was such a major upgrade. I still think the end of Super Mario 3 is better with its fight, but visually this looked great. Also, 
No. <laughs> like, she was trying to help, but it's just like, I don't need a mushroom. I have I have a feather and as a backup. I don't need that replaced. second round. Jeez, oh, that was like right on the edge of not landing. Oh shit. Well. Oh my god. I was gonna say, talk about mercy. I love how just before delivering a killing blow, Bowser's like, no! It just stops. We have to give Mario a fair chance. This is a fair fight. Mario's adventure is over. Mario, the princess, Yoshi, and his friends are going to take a vacation. <laughs> I, always thought, I always thought these fireworks just happened way too slowly. This last one makes sense. But someone was ready with a fireworks display somewhere. Alright, well, that's that's it. That's Super Mario World, the Super Nintendo version. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm still weirded out by the egg thing. I can't believe that was the story the whole time. It's like, these are not babies that we've rescued. This, These are Yoshi friends that Bowser has trapped in these eggs. Bowser has some sort of machine or capability of trapping enemies in eggs, which I guess that's what Yoshi does too, but I don't know what to say. <laughs> I, I don't remember it being that, but it is what it is, and I'm glad that it's just, I guess, not just me. But yeah, this game is a favorite of mine. I just never owned it growing up, but I played it plenty of times, just Part of the reason I was at my cousin's a lot. Um, yeah. Just the fact he had a Super Nintendo and he had these games on there and... I'd played this to death. Much like Mario 3. Would alternate between the two of them. I still think Mario 3 is the better game for me. And the reason is this, is just... Mario 3 has more item variety and... The worlds you visit in Mario 3, they're more varied. Like, each world has a theme. 
And yeah, it's cool. I like it. And I like the ending to it. It's more iconic for me. But, I will say, like, mechanically speaking, this game is amazing. And there's a reason why there's just a massive community around... Whether it be speedrunning, or just taking this as a base and making ROM hacks out of it. But see, this is what this is why I interpret it as, oh, we rescued Yoshi's babies, because there's four Yoshis waiting around, and then the babies hatch. <laughs> I don't know. I I get the feeling that's just something in localization that was just incorrect. I refuse to believe that in Japan that was the story. Also, look at Charge and Chuck here, blue. Not correct. Oh, and you get to see the other enemies now, so that's right. The piranha plants become pumpkins. The bullet bills become pigeons. So I guess that's the disadvantage of not doing Star Road first. You don't get to see some of these alternate enemies, but I guess here, yeah, yeah, you'll see them. I forgot about the pigeon. Yeah, mask trooper. So they're wearing Mario masks, I guess. I can't remember if there were any other ones. But it was downright confusing as a kid. I was like, wait, what happened? <laughs> Why are things so weird now? I... I don't know, like... I feel the need to play through the Game Boy Advance version. I feel like I should experience that at least once, once, much like the other games in the Mario series and the Donkey Kong series. Maybe for another, like, retro session we, we can take a look in future, or I guess if there's high enough demand. Could be sooner rather than later, but, yeah. I guess if you're watching later on YouTube, just reach out if you'd be interested in seeing that. As it does impact my decision making on what I should play next, or what I should look at. Just, I guess, what gets a reception. <laughs> it, it, don't worry, like, YouTube interactions don't go into the void. And there's the whole, uh, family there. Now, I think this is one of these games that doesn't go back to the title screen unless you've reset the cartridge, so... Yeah, that's it. Alright. Well, I hope you enjoyed this casual playthrough of Super Mario World to its entirety. Um, if you haven't played the game before, it's something that still holds up to this day, and there's a reason a lot of people hold it in high regard, and also just, uh, it's been a form of inspiration for a lot of titles, and you can probably see why. But, yeah, check it out if you haven't already, and if you've already grown up on this, I don't know, let me know if... Uh, were you? Did you remember the story like I did, where you're rescuing Yoshi's babies? I want to know. Like, this is probably a Mandela effect. I, I can feel it. Like, half the population will be like, what the hell are you on about, Will? The whole time. Did you not read it? <laughs> and everyone will be like, yeah, that's what I remember, man. You're rescuing Yoshi's babies. What's this thing about Yoshi being trapped in an egg? I don't know. All right. Thanks for sticking around to the end if you're watching later on YouTube. If you want to support the content I do over here, uh, easiest way is just click those buttons for the algorithm. Thank you to those that have done that. Uh, it helps the channel a lot, but it also lets me know what people are into and to do more of that stuff. So, yeah. I'm sure two other videos have popped up on your screen as well. So maybe you want to watch me play something else. Hope you do. Until next time, bye YouTube.